This is the first of a two-part video looking at the condition chronic pancreatitis. In this video, we will specifically look at the etiology or causes of chronic pancreatitis, the mechanism of its effects and complications. In the second part, we will assess the diagnosis and treatment. So let's try and understand this condition a little bit better with the aid of simple line drawings. Here you can see a cartoon drawing of the inside of the abdomen, the liver over here with a bile tube originating from the liver draining bile into the small bowel, the gullet connected to the stomach which turns the food over and passes it into the small bowel and finally the gland the pancreas over here it has a main pancreas tube or the pancreatic duct traversing it that takes the enzymes produced by the pancreas it is in close proximity to the small bowel which is draped at this end of it and the bile tube passes through the pancreas on its journey into the small bowel to try and understand the symptoms of chronic pancreatitis, we need to have some basic understanding of the function of the pancreas. The pancreas has two main functions. It produces pancreatic enzymes. In this cartoon, you can see the main pancreas tube connected to a large number of smaller tubes that produces enzymes or chemicals that break the food down. And these are passed down into the main tube and then into the small bowel to meet with the food coming down. The other important function of the pancreas is endocrine or producing hormones, the most important of which is insulin. These pass on directly into the blood in response to triggers such as blood sugar levels. This condition has three main features. Inflammation. The pancreas gland is inflamed and that means that there is a process of autodigestion where the enzymes become activated within the pancreas causing inflammation and giving rise to products then that then spread out of the pancreas but also propagate the inflammation within the pancreas. The second important feature is fibrosis that is formation of scar tissue within the pancreas causing the pancreas to be atrophic so it's smaller than before and it is associated with loss of function. And finally calcification and that means deposition of calcium deposits throughout the pancreas. So what are the main causes of chronic pancreatitis? And, the, and these are represented by the mnemonic TIGARO. So T for toxic or metabolic and the commonest of which is alcohol responsible for around 50% of the cases. Association with smoking increases the risk of development of chronic pancreatitis. High levels of lipids in the blood such as in diabetes will also trigger chronic pancreatitis in the long term. The second commonest cause is idiopathic, that is we do not know exactly why this happens, but increasingly genetic components are being recognized as a very important feature in development of both acute and chronic pancreatitis. Certainly this plays a much bigger role in children such as those with cystic fibrosis in which this is the number one cause of chronic pancreatitis. Autoimmune, where the body's own immune system attacks the pancreas, any cause that causes acute pancreatitis puts the patients at risk of developing chronic pancreatitis if the offending cause is not recognized and treated. Lastly and importantly, obstructive elements and these and this means that any cause that can cause obstruction of the pancreas tube will put the pancreas at risk of developing pancreatitis. This obstruction could be stone within the pancreas tube, a tumor, trauma, or a stricture or narrowing causing obstruction of the pancreas tube. Let's try and understand the symptoms. So what are the primary symptoms of chronic pancreatitis? And one of the, main, one of the most difficult features of chronic pancreatitis is pain. And here in the cartoon drawing, the location of the pain is at the pit of the stomach in the area called epigastrium. Typically, the pain is unrelenting and radiates through to the back as well as to the sides. It may be associated with vomiting and patients are afraid to eat, especially fatty food or high protein content. Now we have seen that fibrosis develops as well as inflammation and that decreases the function of the pancreas thus not enough enzymes are available to digest the food which is coming down the small bowel over here. And it is the effect of the reduced enzymes that the patients typically find that they have loose stool which is pale offensive. Patients complain of wind and above all they may be nutritionally depleted and typically they find that despite eating 
reasonable amount, they may not be able to regain the, the weight that they have lost. And hence, weight loss is a constant feature with long-term chronic pancreatitis. These patients are at risk of developing diabetes, yet again because of the loss of function within the pancreas due to atrophy, it becomes smaller, there is more fibrosis or scar tissue within the pancreas, and hence not enough insulin is being produced. Uh, this increases the risk of the patient developing long-term diabetes. Now let's look at some of the complications of chronic pancreatitis. So pseudocysts, I've already produced a video on pseudocysts. However, pseudocysts are cysts that develop in the pancreas filled with pancreatic juice or pancreatic fluid and they have scar tissue that makes up the wall of these pseudocysts. They may be asymptomatic but can cause pain, bleeding and symptoms due to pressure on surrounding organs such as the small such as the small bowel or bile duct. Obstruction. The scar tissue that forms within the pancreas can cause strictures to form within the bile tube which is outlined over here and that stops the flow of bile and patients can become jaundiced. Inflammation within the pancreas can also have the same effect. The scar Scar tissue may project into the small bowel causing gastric outlet obstruction so the stomach is unable to propel food forwards due to obstruction secondary to scar tissue or inflammation. The vascular complications include pseudoaneurysm which means weakening of the wall of an artery such as the one next to the pancreas over here causing a risk of blood loss which can sometimes be life-threatening. Equally clots may form in the veins called the portal venous system which increases the pressure in these veins forming dilated veins around the stomach and the esophagus which may bleed catastrophically at times. Lastly and very importantly chronic pancreatitis increases the risk of formation of cancer by several fold and it is not easy to differentiate symptoms caused by the development of the cancer from the effects of chronic pancreatitis itself. This ends the first part of a set of two videos on chronic pancreatitis. I hope you found this of use. If you have any comments, please do share.